Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew Muzan. Welcome back to another Rare View episode. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I know I haven't been on here in a, in a while. I haven't made a video in a while, but I am back with another video. Uh, this time, I'm going to be discussing how to read your Bible. Um, how this video kind of came about was uh, this past Thursday, I was uh, looking, just scrolling YouTube, and, I, and on my recommended section, because I'm on YouTube a lot, uh, on my recommended section, I saw, you know, a couple of videos about people, how they read their Bibles, and I clicked on one, and there was this one young lady, and she was talking about, okay, she got, she has this journal, um, you know, this devotional, and she has a journal, and she has a Bible, and they, she reads the devotional, and the devotional is like this big, and then they read the associated scripture with it, and maybe the chapter, and then writes down, you know, journals, or whatever, and then that's it, really, and that was like the basis of the video, you know, and I kind of, that kind of provoked me, made me feel like, okay, well, I need to go in here and make a video and, 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 and tell my viewers and, and, you know, tell others, encourage others, you know, to uh, uh, teach others how to read the Bible, you know. And there's no perfect, I'm not saying, I'm sitting here saying, okay, I, I got the keys to reading the Bible. This is how you do it. This is how, this is just how it worked for me. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of communities, a lot of YouTubers that tell you how they read their Bible and, you know, they're associated with devotionals. And I have no problem with devotionals. I know for a fact, I used to look at devotionals sometime here and there, but devotionals just wasn't doing it for me. I know they do it for some other people, but devotionals just wasn't doing it for me to the extent that I was trying to get done, you know, and to the extent that I was trying to grow. So, you, you know, God meets people where, where they're at and he meets everybody. He meets each and every one of us where are at, where, where we are at, excuse me. And um, I just wanted to come on here and show, you know, give a quick synopsis of how I read my Bible. But I wanted to preface my comments um, just by, you know, just by saying, uh, you know, that, you know, it, reading your Bible is necessary to your growth as a Christian. If you don't read your, you know, if you don't, if you don't grow, I mean, if you don't sow into yourself, you don't feed yourself, how can you grow? You can't grow without feeding yourself, without sowing into yourself. Meaning, if you got to pay money for a study Bible, buy it. If you got to pay money for a concordance to understand the words, buy it. You know, do what is necessary for your spiritual walk and development. But but you, you know that it's, it's that reading your Bible is necessary. You know that that is our manual. That is um you as you heard me say before that is our manual. This is how we you know this is how we live. This is you want to hear God speak. This is where God speaks. You, you, you know you go to His written word before you go seeking a rhema word. But this is where this is how we get better as believers. And you can't get better excluding your walk from reading this. You need the you need the word in your life every single day. And um, it's important that you read your word every single day, you know, that you can make time. I know that people have lives, people have marriages, people have kids, they're in college, and there's a whole bunch of stuff like that fighting for our time. But that, but there is, I guarantee you, there's 30 minutes, there's 5 minutes, there's 20 minutes, there's an hour that you can give to, to reading the scripture. And start small. If, if uh, Reading a, a, a passage of scripture and meditating on that passage of scripture is better than nothing. Better than, you know, you know, the devil may try to try to fight lies or give you lies that, OK, well, you're not you're only reading a, a verse. You're not you're not good enough, you know, stuff like that. But a verse is better than no verse. A verse hitting you in your heart can help you down the road than no verse hidden in your heart. So and that's another thing. I'm getting ahead of myself. But that's another thing why reading the Bible is so important, because the Bible says um, in Psalms, like our high guys were in my well, we had to say a pledge. In 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 high school, growing up, I went to a Christian school. We had to say a pledge. It was a Bible pledge, and there's a song that goes along with it. But at the end of the ple the Bible pledge, we would say, "I, I will hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against Him." That's a scripture. So, and he was like, "Well, hide God's word in my heart. How do you hide God's word by confession, by memorization, by by reading it? That's how you hide God's word in your heart. And when you hide God's word in your heart, whenever you get attacked mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, and you're not near your Bible, you can regurgitate scripture. But a lot of Christians who say they are Christians don't know any scriptures." And they may be going through hell and high water outside of their home, but they have no scripture to 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 um uh, to say. And the devil flees at scripture. It, it, the you know, in looking at the passage in Luke, Math, Luke four, Matthew four, the devil fled at scripture. You know, he he flees at scripture. You know, the Jesus spoke to spoke to the devil in scripture. He didn't say, "Oh, leave me alone," or "Do this," or "Just leave me alone," okay, whatever. No, he said, "It is written." He knew what the Bible said. 
And a lot of Christians don't know what the Bible said, but they call themselves Christian. You know, but they but they want to live a holy life when they're not being cleansed. How can you live a holy life when you're not trying to be cleansed? This is the cleansing solution. The word of God is the cleansing solution to the spiritual eyeglasses. The word of God is the cleansing solution to the spiritual eyeglasses. So first off, um, some versions of the, the Bible to read are the King James Version, the New King James Version, the ESV, the Amplified, and then the, the Message Bible. I like the Message Bible strictly for like uh, comparison and con comparing and contrasting scripture. Like if I like for, for, for other and I'm gonna break this down. This is I'm going ahead of myself with this one as well. So with the Amplified version of the Bible and the Message Bible. I go to those two things to expand scripture. The Amplified Bible is amplified. It explain it it expands the scripture. You may see uh, uh for Philippians four thirteen it may it may say um what it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But in the Amplified it said it has like two more lines on there and uh, it expands scripture. You know and sometimes to get a better understanding of scripture you have to you have to sometimes break it down but it also takes expanding it and looking at other versions of scripture when in trying to get a better understanding of what God wants you to do or, or how this how, or how does this apply to me or how can I better understand this you go to the amplified version or the message bible or the living bible and and those really are those three bibles that I really go to you know to to expand scripture a little bit more to say okay well this version of the bible says this for instance, um, I know Colossians, I believe it's Colossians to get in the word. Um, Colossians 3.2. Yeah, 3.2 in the New King James Version says, set your, mind in, uh, set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. But the Amplified Version says, set your mind and keep your mind on things above and not on things of this earth. So it, it, it you know, it uh, amplifies and gives you the fuller Greek um, text or the Greek definition of that verse. So in the New King James, it says, set your mind. But I'm like, okay, set my mind. But in the Amplified, it says, set your mind and keep your mind. And then from that, you could imply that because that we can't set our minds only once but the new king james doesn't say that say that it just says set your mind so you you may just be thinking okay well i set my mind once but the amplified says set your mind and keep your mind so it, it you know reading different versions of the bible helps you along in your walk in, in trying to understand certain scriptures i wouldn't recommend those those extra um those extra uh bibles except for the amplified i would recommend the amplified but not the Message Bible or the Living Bible or these, some of these other Bibles because they take words out and they take words out of context. Like sometimes I look, I'll look at the Message Bible and I'd be like, what? Like I'm, it says this in the New King James, but it says this in the Message Bible. It's, and it's totally like off track. So, so some, some of that stuff you got to be aware of. But those are just some of the Bibles that you, uh, that you can get. So the first thing when coming, trying to read your Bible is to you, you want to incorporate assigned readings. That's one of the first things I did um, when I started reading my Bible was incorporate assigned readings. I got this from um, my, my mentor, but uh, my mentor Joshua Ezzy. Um, he, I remember him telling me a Proverbs a day, a Gospel a month, and I was like, okay, cool. And then I started reading a Proverbs a day, a Gospel a month. But I kind of add on to it and um, uh, added a Psalm a day for like, because Psalm, a, a Psalm is like has a huge. A, a humility type of tone to, to 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 that book. There's a lot of humility. There's a lot of songs. A lot of good stuff in there. So I read like I may read like a Psalms a day, um, or some. I, read, I I know for me, I read Psalms 23 every almost every day. Psalms 91, Psalms 103, Psalm 1. Um, a couple of those that are like most famous, most known that I remember uh, studying growing up that are really good. And then I'll read I'll read a Proverbs a day, and then I'll go into one of the gospels per month and do maybe two chapters in that a day. Now, that's a lot of reading, you know. Sometimes I may not even get through two chapters. I may just get through one chapter. I may get through, you know, I may get me be stuck on two chapters for a couple of days. I may stick on a chapter for a whole week, depending on how meaty it is. It's just your discretion, you know. So, because some people are like two chapters a day, like, dang, that's a lot of reading. But, you know, you know that's just how I've trained myself you know and then i've actually gotten convicted by the holy spirit you know at one point in time because i was doing all this reading but i'll be driving and then i'll 
get reminded in my in my spirit like what what did you learn today? Or it'll come up in my spirit like what did you learn today? And I couldn't tell you the darnest thing. I couldn't tell you the darnest thing. And I'm just like, man, okay, that really convicted me and showed me that okay, that I could read, that I could have the discipline of reading every single day. But if I'm not regurg if I can't regurgitate it and if I didn't learn anything, did I really read? Did I really read to understand? Because we have to look at reading our Bibles like time in our Bibles like time with Jesus. Like Jesus is the word. Jesus is the Jesus is the word. So when we open this Bible, we're spending time with we're spending time with the Son of God. So I have to look at it like that. Like and at times I just be reading to read and that's the that's the place where the devil wants people at. You know, a place where you're just reading to read, and they they you you, you were they couldn't get you to read for. I mean, they they could they uh, stopped you from reading, or and then you started reading, and then they couldn't stop you from reading every single day, but they stopped you from being able to understand. You got tired. You you read the same verse five times. You from you you you're thinking about over here when you're supposed to be here. All these different things because they want a Christian to read. You could read every single day. You know, for me, I was struggling. I, I, I was struggling in certain areas and I was wondering, I'm like, man, I watch six to eight hours worth of sermons a day. I, I, I do this and all this other stuff like that. Why is this stuff happening? Because, and as it goes into my next point, I wasn't reading the Bible for the things that are wrong with me. I was reading the Bible simply to read the Bible. And I, you know, good stuff, strong stuff, it helps me in certain areas, but I wasn't focusing the bulk of my time like, Lord, fix me. I was like, okay, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and, and, and walk by faith, not by sight. All these faith scriptures, all stuff like that and watching sermons on faith and authority and all stuff like that. Stuff I know about, but I'm not, I'm not reading nothing on lust. I'm not reading nothing on self-control, discipline, obedience. I'm not reading on, on none of stuff like that. And that's where I need to, you know, that's where I need to focus on, you know, those strong points, you know, uh, it reminds me of um, something that happened, happened at Unplugged. On Thursday, Unplugged is a weekly Bible study in Charlotte. And um, Josh, Joshua Izzy was saying how the two things men deal with most are lust and money. So, you, you know, that, that are tailored to men are lust and money. So you need to you need to look at scriptures relative to lust and discipline and obedience. So and, and I just found that kind of interesting just thinking about that just now. But, you know, in reading, you know, you should start with a sign readings. You should start with a psalm a day, a proverb a day. And maybe, you know, a, 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 a gospel a month and maybe a chapter of that a day. So really three chapters a day or two chapters, whatever, however the Holy Spirit flows with you is that's how, how your reading should be guided. But yeah, just to go along with that, you want to go into, you want to read your Bible relative to your, to your weaknesses, not your strengths. If you're already strong in faith, don't go study, you study faith because you can never, and that goes along with what I was saying in the beginning of the video, talking about, um, you know, talking about how it's important to read your Bible or whatever, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if faith comes by hearing, it doesn't matter who says it. You could say the words, you have to confess the word, but you also could be hearing it from sermons. So, and faith pleases God. Hebrews, what, 11, 6? Faith pleases God. Without faith, we can't, cannot please God. So that's, this is a faith world. We are in a faith world as believers. We are, we have to operate in faith every single day. And if you ain't got no faith, how can you please God? And how do you get faith? By the word of God. So faith and, uh, and faith and the word are synonymous and you have to get into the word to build your faith. But just goes on that, like I would just be reading all these faith scriptures and stuff like that, but I'm still over here struggling with this. I'm still over here struggling with that. And that's why I need to be tailoring my time to. And then I've noticed a change in how I read my Bible. Now I, I may read my Bible for an hour or so, but I may be, I may like to, let's say for today, I looked at Judges 13 to 16. I was looking on self-control. A good, two good passages on self-control are in Luke 4. You can look at the temptation. Temptation of Jesus is a good, is a, a good passage of self-control. And then you can look at Samson and Delilah. But I was in really Judges and I was really in Luke most of the day and that was it and that took over like uh, maybe an hour hour and a half and that was just in those two two places and that was it and I got fed and I remembered you know and I remembered and it helped me you know it helped me out so those are just some things to remember and another thing you want to do is take advantage of cross references so in my bible and pretty much every bible they have these letters beside it, I'm sure you all are familiar with that they have these letters 
um, beside beside or over the words that tell you uh, where certain things are at, you know, uh, certain things are at in cross references. And a lot of the New Testament bears reference with the Old Testament. A lot of stuff is re relates back to the Old Testament, and, and it's just it's crazy how God is in how Jesus is is in every single book. But you know, uh, but yeah. So looking at cross references is another way. So like if like I said earlier, if you're just looking at one scripture, if all you do is look at Philippians four thirteen, I'm I'm pretty sure that there's a cross reference for that thirteenth verse that you can go reference something in the Old Testament or reference something other in the New Testament. So cross references are a great way in uh, advancing your reading of the Bible. You look at cross references, go back and it'll you know, and then read some of that chapter and stuff like that. So. Um, but the cross references are a, a good place to start as well. And another thing is to take notes on what you read and meditate. That's something I have to get better at because I take a lot of notes. But I have I, 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 I do I do not dedicate that much time to my studying those notes. But I look over them occasionally. What I'm going to try to do, which you could do as well, is before you even start reading your Bible, you could pray. But you could look over the notes that you took yesterday or the notes that you've been taking this week. And look over those notes, confess them, think about them, meditate on them, and then get into the word. But taking notes, I don't, I don't, I don't know if people take a lot of notes, but take, definitely take notes. Get you a study Bible that has a lot of um, um, footnotes in it uh, about certain verses, about the the time back there, the biblical time back then and there. So that's helped me a lot in my advancing of the word. And then also, you want to confess the word over yourself. So, like, I talked about confessing earlier, talking about hiding eyes already in your heart. You want to confess the word over yourself. So, and then also when you're reading the word, you want to say me too. I remember, I forget who, I forget who said that. I think it was uh, Minister Matthew Chapman. Um, I was listening to one of his sermons on re redemption or, or something or other. And he had said, when, you, when we have to, when we read the Bible, we should start saying me too. So when you, when you read certain things, you like me too. Or you confess that, or you say, Lord, I confess Psalms 103, 1 over my life. Lord, I confess Isaiah 53, 5 over my life. And you can confess, the, confess those scriptures. Get those in your heart. Um, another thing, you want to become not just a, 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 a reader, but a student. You know, grab pens, grab highlighters, and treat your time in the Word like it's a class. Treat your time in the Word like it's Jesus in front of you. Jesus is the professor, and he's teaching you. Treat it like that. Grab your pen, grab your pad. And, and, and think really think about things, underline things, utilize circles, utilize uh, underlinings, write in your Bible, all those different things that help you in your spiritual walk. So overall, this just was a, a brief synopsis of how I read my Bible and, and some tips and tricks that I've learned across the way. And I pray that they benefit you guys because I know that they benefited me. And, and I thank you guys for, for viewing this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And, and I thank you guys for viewing. Peace.